uh, and the the uh, the uh, research in society, and they can talk to people. So they are the ones who are changing it by their tongue. So they uh, uh, advise people who have direct power. They organize uh, um, conferences. They organize research um, uh, debates. Uh, and they have a consultative status um, and they are the ones who use their tongue in order to remove the, uh, the monk. So they have indirect influence and they make the, the, an indirect change. The last category are the people who have no direct power and no indirect power either. So they, uh, what their, their obligation is then to not accept this monka as something normal, as something acceptable, as something that they are content with. This is within their hearts and within their feelings. They must recognize this as uh, a phenomena or as an activity which is not acceptable, which requires change, which needs to be changed. And so having this feeling inside their hearts is what's required from the third type of people who have no direct power and no indirect power. And this last category has been uh, described by the Prophet ﷺ as the weakest level of Iman, which is there is an indication that these people have no direct or indirect power, uh, but to feel that this phenomena is not acceptable and requires change is the least that is uh, required from the Iman. So if they are, if they want to keep their iman, if they want to keep uh, their belief, then they are required to feel that this phenomena is not acceptable and requires change. No. تأثيرها محدود في تغيير المنكر لكنها من ما يغير المنكر كون الإنسان ينكر بقلبه ليس فعلا سلبيا بل هو إيجابي ولا بد منه وهو يؤثر ولكن تأثيره محدود فلا يلتبس ولا يشوش على الإنسان حين ينكر بقلبه أن هذا لا فائدة منه أو أن هذا لا تأثير له أبدا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما أمر به إلا لفائدته ولنفعه ولكونه يؤثر شيئا من التأثير الأمر الآخر أن الأمر المنكر ينبغي أن يكون معلوما حتى لا ينكر الإنسان ما لا ينكر حتى لا يأتي ينكر معروفا مثلا فهذه قضية ينبغي أن يتفطن لها ومن هنا وجب أن يكون المنكر عالما بما ينكر عليه بالشيء المنكر وأنه كذلك حقا في عين الشر لا كما يتصوره هو فكم من إنسان يريد أن ينكر على غيره ويرميه بالمنكر ويكون هذا الذي يرميه به ليس منكرا في عين الشر وإنما هو فقط في وهمه وخياله فيقع في المحظور ولهذا قال العلماء لا ينكر على مختلف فيه المسائل التي اختلف فيها العلماء هذه مسائل لا إنكار فيها لا يأتي أحد ويقول مثلا العود مثلا آلة الموسيقى 
هذا منكر ويكسرك يقول له ابو حنيفه يقول له اذا كسرته غرمت الخشب الذي صنع به فهذا الانكار او 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 يكون قاضيا في المساله ابن حزم فيقول له لقد يعني افسدت شيئا صالحا وعليك تعويضه فليس كل امر ينكر عليه بل لا بد ان ينكر فقط في المجمع عليه يعني الشيء الذي اجتمع الفقهاء و إذا كان من 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 الحرام اجتمع الفقهاء على تحريمه. أما ما اختلفوا فيه، أنت تأتي تنكر عليه يقول لك أنا لا أتبع هذا الرأي. أنا أتبع رأي العالم الفلان ابن مسعود أو ابن عباس، ماذا ستفعل؟ فلا إنكار في مختلف فيه، ولهذا ذكر العلماء كالإمام المازري رحمه الله شارح صحيح مسلم قاعدة جميلة قالوا من كثر علمه قل إنكاره كلما اتسع علم الإنسان يقل ما ينكر يعرف أين ينكر فلا ينكر على أي شيء وإنما ينكر فقط في المتفق عليه والمجمع عليه يعني بشروط وأداب ذكرها العلماء في تغيير الملك. Okay, so this last level that's mentioned in the hadith, which is uh, the lowest level of the iman, uh, as the Sheikh mentioned, this is for those people who have no direct or indirect influence uh, in being able to change the, the situation or change the undesired. Uh, phenomena, but there shouldn't be a confusion here that there's no point uh, in uh, holding this position. That uh, the Prophet ﷺ would not have mentioned uh, this uh, category and holding this position unless uh, there was benefit in holding the position. And obviously, there is benefit in, in holding this position because. If this phenomena is recognized as undesirable and unacceptable and requiring change, then as the whole situation of society changes and uh, possibilities arise and other opportunities arise, then maybe uh, this person who is holding it uh, as unacceptable in the heart will become into the situation where they have indirect influence or maybe direct influence. So holding this position, the third position, is something which is very beneficial and it wouldn't have been mentioned uh, otherwise. Then the question, obviously, one of the questions that will definitely arise is how is a munkar recognized? How is an undesirable activity in society recognized? And the Sheikh mentioned that no one must uh, define or label an activity as munkar or as, un as undesirable unless this person is uh, an expert uh, and uh, scholarly in this area. Uh, so not anyone can just go around labeling things as monka. And it must be based on objective evidences from the Sharia. And it must not be uh, a personal ishtihad, uh, uh, a personal opinion of, of a particular scholar. And the Sheikh then mentioned a, a general rule that's to be followed in this area where he said لا ينكر فيما فيما اختلف فيه that no one must declare or label or identify an, an undesirable activity in those matters which the scholars themselves have differed about so if there's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars in a certain issue then that issue cannot be labeled as undesirable by anybody they gave an example of uh, a certain type of musical instrument called uh, a oud, which is uh, it's, it's uh, like a guitar, it's, uh, a lute, and uh, I think it's used in Ireland sometimes, I don't know, maybe the traditional music here. 
But uh, Ibn Rushd, for example, uh, allowed it. Ibn Hazm, sorry. Ibn Hazm allowed it. And therefore, if someone uh, declared it as a munkar and then tried to change it with the hand and came up and, and smashed it and broke it into pieces, then they were taken to a judge who was following uh, Ibn Hazm's school of thought. Uh, the judge would, would ask for uh, re uh, recompense, would ask for the, the price of this instrument to be paid. 